Chinese honorifics are words and phrases that indicate social respect or deference in the spoken or written language. Especially before the 20th century, the language used among friends would be very different from that used among strangers such as merchants. Although most Chinese honorifics have fallen out of street use since the end of Imperial China, they can still be understood, and indeed occasionally used, by most contemporary Chinese speakers. This is partly attributable to the popularity of Chinese historical novels and television dramas, which often employ language from the classical periods. In general, language referring to oneself exhibits self-deprecating humbleness, while language referring to others shows approval and respect. Honorific language in Chinese was often achieved by using honorific alternatives, prefixing or suffixing a word with a polite compliment, or simply by dropping casual-sounding words. Example Mi Mi, Xing Xing, Xing Mi Xin Mei What family name do you have? The sentence above is a perfectly acceptable question when addressing others of equal or lower status. In normal conversation, the extent of making it more polite might be to preface it with a ching, ching, please, accommodated by a when, when, ask, as it is a question. However, if the addressee is of higher status or the person asking the question wants to show more respect, several changes may occur. The sentence begins with ching, lit, invite, request. The sentence includes the interrogative verb when or when, when, ask, to accommodate this more formal sense of ching. The regular second person pronoun ni, ni, you, is replaced by the honorific second person pronoun nin, nin, you, cherished. The honorific adjective or prefix gui or gui, gui, lit, expensive, valuable, is added before xing, xing. Last name. To complement the addressee, the interrogative pronoun shane me or shane me, shen mei. What? Is dropped entirely as the structure of the sentence changes the resulting sentence. Ching ching, wen wen, nin nin, gui xing, gui xing. May I respectfully request to ask you, whom I cherish, for your honorable surname? is much more polite and more commonly used among people in formal or careful situations. Below is a collection of some of the better-known honorifics and polite prefixes and suffixes that have been used at one time or another in the Chinese lexicon. Pronunciations given are those of today's Mandarin Chinese. Note that many of these terms became obsolete after the end of the Qing dynasty or were deprecated during the Cultural Revolution and are no longer used. Referring to oneself When referring to oneself, the first person pronoun was to be avoided in most situations. Persons of lower status, including slaves, children, and youths, were not to use it when speaking to those of higher status, while those of higher status, including lords, parents, and elders, frequently avoided it as a display of humility and virtue. Instead, a third-person descriptor was used, which varied according to the situation. Referring to oneself in the third person could be used arrogantly as well, to assert one's superiority or even dominance over one's audience. This was most common in the imperial middle management, the imperial consorts, the army, and the imperial bureaucracy, with the emperor instead often describing himself in sorrowful terms out of respect for his deceased father. Commoners and the humble Emperors, kings and the imperial family Officials and officers Old men and women Scholars and monks Families some of the following are still in use today in various Chinese dialects. Addressing or referring to others The same concept of hierarchical speech and etiquette affects terms of address towards others as well as oneself. In most cases in modern Chinese, politeness can be expressed by replacing the standard second-person pronoun ni, ni, you, 
with its polite form nin, nin, you, cherished. In a historical context, and in some modern contexts, the audience's title or profession is used in place of the historic second person pronouns er and er, er, you, or the modern ni. In other cases, there might be specific alternatives to be employed instead. Below are examples of proper substitutes. Emperors Important people The following are commonly used today. By titles The addressee's family members The following terms are still in use today. One's own family Friends Elders The deceased The following are commonly found in spiritual tablets and gravestones. Strangers or social encounters Other prefixes and suffixes Salutations Salutation is used at the beginning of a speech or a letter to address the audience or recipients. In the English language, salutations are usually in the form, Dear. However, the Chinese language has more variations for salutation, which are used in different situations. Here are a few examples in modern Chinese. Chin Ida Chin Ida Chin Ida Dear, Beloved Zun Jing De Zun Jing De, Revered Jing Ida Jing Ida Jing Ida, Dear Esteemed Pejorative slang It has been a tradition for many years in China to address oneself colloquially using these pronouns in place of I to indicate contempt for the listener, to assert the superiority of oneself, or when teasing Lao Zi Lao Zi, not to be confused with Lao Zi the philosopher, written the same way, I, your dad, referring to oneself as superior Ye Ye Ye, I, your lord. Used in parts of northern China Nen Fu Hokkien, Lin Pei, I, your dad, referring to oneself as superior, when used towards a person less well known or on formal occasions, both terms are considered to be incredibly rude, and are usually used to purposely disgrace the addressee, however, it is less of an issue when spoken among close friends, though even some friends might still be offended by their use. See also Chinese titles Chinese pronouns References, <references>